Hi guys, and welcome again to the uh, second largest show of Belgium in La Glaise in the Ardennes. We already made a video here last year where you could see the, the, the Tiger Tank a bit further up the road. And of course, we're back with a huge stall uh, today. Uh, we brought uh, an amazing uh, lot of items. We found a great lot of items as well that I will show you later. And I'll show you around the stand uh, a little bit now. So here, just around, uh, behind me, I uh, brought uh, three different uh, type of splitter tarn uh, garments. Uh, this would be a, a sniper smock in splitter tarn, very rare, nicely make remarked here. And of course, very desirable, it still has the face veal. So most of the times Germans would cut this off because it was very annoying. And you can imagine, of course, having a thing like this in your face all the time. Um, but, but just finding a smock in, in this uh, camouflage pattern uh, is, is already very rare. While, while normally if you find these sniper smocks, they're mostly in the zoom tarn pattern. Um, so this is very scarce to find and especially complete with, uh, with the face view. So just next to it, in, in the same uh, camouflage pattern, um, we have um, we have the Falschenmeger smock, and um, and the Falschenmeger smock is, is actually came out of my personal collection. I slimmed it down a little bit, um, and it has an original applied eagle. And how can you tell? Um, you have to see the stitch the, the stitching material here used has to be exactly the same as as this one here. If this color variates to the color here, you can already be sure that the eagle would have been replaced some, some time uh, in, in the war. And of course, finding these smocks with original applied eagles is very hard compared to the ones where the eagle was torn off uh, when they went to a, a prisoner of war camp, uh, for example. And just across here is a, a lift of a field division smoke. Again, the same pattern, but also it's a different material. So all these materials are different. This is thin cotton, heavy. And this is then the very early uh, Grunmeliert um, uh, cloth, the very early Luftoffer cloth. You can see it here, it's a waterproof cloth, very thick, not the HBT uh, cloth you will see on the later type of smoke. So it's a very early first pattern Luftoffer smoke has a, a zigzag applied eagle on there. Um, and of course, because it has been worn, uh, the markings are, um, are, are faded inside. I already showed this here. This is Sumftarn, so an other camouflage pattern. Uh, this has more um, sand, uh, sand colors, actually. And this is a mountain trooper smoke, so three pocket smoke from a mountain trooper. I actually have two examples, extremely hard to find. You mostly find these smokes in either green or gray colors, reversible to white. Finding them in these camouflage colors, extremely rare, and it's actually very coincident that I happen to have two of them at the moment. But on the bright, even better here, I have the matching trousers as well. So these are the, the trousers that matches with this uh, kind of garment, made in the same windproof material, and it's actually designed to, to go over the normal trousers, so, so, so that, it, uh, that you're totally camouflaged, but it doesn't, uh, you won't get extra heated because it's, very, um, it's made of very thin uh, material. So moving on in the stand, um, I have a few helmets here and, head, uh, and a few uh, pieces of headgear. Uh, of course here, this is the, the Falschmeger helmet you already saw on the previous video. I have it here for sale at the show. Uh, already a lot of interest uh, in it today. And um, I think uh, it will sell soon, hopefully. Um, and then moving on here, we uh, brought our, um, our total in insignia inventory. A bit of everything, iron crosses, normal patches, uh, bevo patches, of course. Uh, in unissued conditions, uh, yeah, the stuff I like to see, of course. Um, then here, what's new in the case here, uh, this is a nice MP40 pouch, a standard uh, issue pouch. It has the 
speed loader pouch on the side okay and it's nicely marked on the back here uh, mp38 or means uh, uh, or mp40 and here um, you can see the maker mark which is gmn dated 1942 and it has the waffenamt uh, acceptance stamp as well from the german army really nice pouch you just have it in stock um, and here we have a few new daggers i already showed a lot of daggers in the previous videos um, but we have an RAD dagger, which is very nice. And um, over here we have a few nice shovel uh, uh, holsters. So this is particular. This example is very nice because it's actually made in a tan-colored uh, uh, artificial leather. Um, it has a, I believe it, it was, it has a maker mark, but it's it's somewhat faded. Um, it has an original strap. Always, if you buy these things, look if this strap is original because this these straps. Um, are very vulnerable and they can be replaced with time so always see if this stitching here is the same as the rest of the of the of the piece so that way you can be sure it's a, it's an original one now the other one i have is a mint example it was never issued and it's very interesting because um, you can see this maker mark here it's actually the maker mark of the of the artificial leather and it says here as well Kunstleder, which means artificial leather. So this has to be, uh, must have been a big sheet of, uh, of artificial leather that they cut down, and and per accident, um, this was actually uh, used to, to, to build this uh, to build this uh, particular uh, shovel hostel. This one still has a maker mark on the reverse. Um, you can see it here. Uh, oh, it's hard to read. Uh, I said, I think it's OGA 1943, and also a Waffenamt acceptance stamp on the on the reverse. So. That's, that's a bit of stuff I brought to the show. Of course, I also found a few nice things at the show and I'm, I'm very uh, eager to, to show them to you. So um, the first thing I found here today was a very nice M43 pants um, executed in, in uh, thick gray wool, a very late war example. Um, so not the green version, but a gray version. Um, and the inside is complete. It has been worn and we can still see a few faded markings over here. It's interesting to see that the that the, the, the lining material is made of um, uh, HBT uh, twill cloth uh, that you often see on the summer tunics, probably leftovers that they used at the end of the war to finish these uh, trousers with different kinds of materials on the inside, something typical for late war uh, German uniforms. Then, of course, you know I like helmets, so I bought a few very rare helmets. The best helmet I found here um, is this a uh, gladiator so it's a it's a one piece gladiator so normally they, they would have pieces here one piece gladiator very late war um felt heron hollow so it has a, a special decal here it looks a bit like a police shield but it's actually uh, an uh, nsdap eagle um and the other side has a standard party decal of course inside we can still see the the, the blue luftschutz paint because it was a reissued helmet but here is a very interesting decal um, it says Eigentum der Gauleitung Sachsen der NSDAP, so it means a property of, um, of the, the government of, uh, of Sachsen, the province in Germany. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's one of a kind. I, I, I believe there's only a few known in the world, um, but a few I mean like three or four pieces. Um, I finally own one. I, I, I knew that this helmet was in a collection and I knew this particular person was going to sell his collection today so I was of course the first at the stand this morning to uh, to obtain this uh, beautiful example for my uh, private collection uh, just just another extra with these late war helmets you can see these white plastic chin straps uh, they're not post-war it was really made like this uh, uh, it's as it should be and you can find Luftschutz helmets similar to that having the same plastic chin straps so moving on this is a, a very nice uh, example here. It's a, a Luftwaffe uh, Normandy pattern, so a three-color pattern uh, camouflage helmet. Um, if, we, if we look very closely here, uh, we could still see parts of the Luftwaffe decal under the paint. And of course, very interesting here, you can see uh, still a ghosting of the chicken wire that used to be uh, over, over the helmet. The, the inside of the helmet is complete with the liner and if, if we gently pull over here we can see that the split pins remain untouched never never been the liner has never come out so it's a really nice untouched helmet it has a name inside chin strap is there just an exquisite um, normandy pattern uh, Luftwaffe camouflage helmet also probably for my own collection um, continuing with another helmet 
This is a, an M18, a World War I steel helmet that was reissued during World War II. Uh, and, and again, it was camouflaged, so it's already a, a nice thing to find these helmets reissued, but it's very scarce to find them camouflaged. So this type of pattern is also a three-color pattern, and it's um, it's actually linked to uh, Holland. So um, uh, for some reason, this pattern was issued uh, in Holland in 1944-1945, um, and and you will see period pictures of of, peop uh, of as mostly SS soldiers in Holland wearing this type of camo scheme. Um, having it in an M18 transitional version is of course one of a kind. It's a super nice helmet. Again, the liner has not been taken out. It's uh, it has a, a marking here. Chin strap is there as well. So uh, a beautiful example. And we might have to figure out if we can spot some decals under the paint uh, when I get home later. And then the last helmet, a similar one, similar pattern scheme. As you can see again, the Dutch pattern. They almost, they're almost like twins. A bit more shiny here is this example. And if you look very close here, we can see a ghosting of an army decal still under the paint. And of course it's complete with the liner, very soft leather. The, the drawstring is there. Full length chin strap is there. It's even maker mark on the tip. And uh, just, yeah, beautiful example. So this is what I got. I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit starstruck myself finding this here, uh, finding all these nice quality helmets here today. Uh, it's even better than, than sometimes going to the United States. So I would recommend everybody to go to La Glaise show and, and give it a chance. But you have to be here early, wake up at five o'clock in the morning to, to, to really get uh, the bargains. So I've also noticed here at the show, uh, a lot of German customers come here um, and, um, and we had a lot of uh, positive feedback on the videos we make. So I just want to make sure I also speak German. If you have any questions about the inventory, you can always call me. You will find my phone number on the, on the website. I can speak German and we ship all the items to Germany as well, without a doubt. So we are back home again in uh, Zulte, Belgium, from the La Glaise show. Uh, we're here in the shop 
everything is uh, almost unpacked and um, I want to say that I have to correct myself for something I said previously in the video. So I remember you were, I was talking about this beautiful uh, and rare gladiator helmet. I refer to it as a Feldhenhall helmet, but actually after a little bit of research, it's actually an NSDAP guard helmet. So uh, uh, it would be a guard from the, from the party at the end of the war, um, maybe protecting um, important people uh, that worked for the party. So uh, it makes it even rarer than, than uh, a Feldhenhall helmet. And um, I have seen some threads on online forum uh, about, this about these helmets, sorry. And uh, like I said before, only a few examples are, are known today. So the, the last thing I would like to share is that uh, even on, on Sunday I was at the show, um, everybody was um, demolishing their stands, but I, I, uh, I was able to find a little bit more items than I showed previously. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the nicest things I found in the, in the early mornings on Sunday is this uh, nice M36 uh, German field uh, tunic. Um, as you can see, it's been heavily worn. Um, and of course, um, as many of these tunics, um, the 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 uniform, the eagle, the breast eagle was uh, was taken off uh, as it was uh, supposed to for prisoners of war. And here on the sleeve, very interesting, you can see also the remains of a, a crim or Kuban shield that was also removed because it also had a swastika. Uh, nevertheless, it still has the original mounted um, uh, uh, color color tabs, and. Um, I was very surprised when I when I started to look in the pockets. Um, this tunic was never touched. I think it just came straight out of the, uh, out of the attic. Um, where is it? Because I, it was there before. Uh, as you can see here, there's still uh, a, um, a, a ticket from a, from a movie uh, inside. It says here for Wehrmacht and Waffen SS. Um, and then even more interesting was in this pocket, if I believe and hopefully correct. Let me go inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's coming. Oh, here we are. This is a nice piece of paper here. Um, I believe it's a it's a paper uh, still in there from 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 Vienna, uh, Wien in Germany, Austria, uh, and even some pills inside still, um, still all there. Was there another paper inside? Let me see. Oh yeah, there it is. Here we go. This is another paper. And it says something about a SS um, field hospital. And he must have got uh, in, in, in Prague, in, uh, in Czechia. And this is a code for an assault book. So that must have been together with these <laughs> pills. I don't know what they are, but they were still inside. So. Um, uh, that, that, that's always a nice thing when, when you really find these, these untouched German tunics on, 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 on small shows. Um, I believe this came directly from the attic and, and the stuff is still inside of the pockets. I, I have found medals inside. Unfortunately, there's no night cross today, but, uh, but you never know. Um, and it's just a nice, honest uh, M36 jacket. You can still see the, the typical blue-green color and the cotton lining, typical for an M36. And as I mentioned in the, the movie about the, the tunics before, this is a combat use tunic. And you can see here, they move the pockets a little bit upwards, covering um, two of the three hole of the belt loop holes here. Um, also cutting down a little bit of the first aid pocket. And they did that because it was more comfortable to wear uh, at the front because the tunics were often made a bit too, uh, too long. So we're probably gonna, gonna look here to find a, a nice matching eagle so we can restore it and then we can uh, probably place it for sale again so it will be um, nicely co complete. Um, and the, you can see here the Ost front or Eastern metal ribbon is still attached. There's also a small uh, pair of loops here, probably for a, a German wound badge. Now, now, this was one of the last things I got at the show. Uh, it was a friend of me who came to offer it at my stand. Um, he found it in Germany locally was never in a collection before besides his. It's a nice M35 uh, army helmet, very early one with a single band uh, aluminum liner. So it's very uh, uh, still intact. The split pins unmasked with original uh, chin strap early one with the aluminum buckle. A name tag still sewn inside here in the leather, but very hard to read. And of course a nice um, tan or white colored 
uh, camouflage paint covering the whole helmet and even the decals and, and you can still see here whether the, the paint is damaged the early apple green uh, color is, is peaking through so uh, yeah another very nice camouflage helmet i also got a nice pair of shoulder boards maybe to go with this tunic m36 shoulder boards um, you will see here the seam uh, and if you fold it like that, you can really see it's two pieces of cloth. So, so why do many of these shoulder boards have a seam like that? It's because they all the, the leftover um, pieces of, of cloth they ha would have in a uniform factory, they would sew them back together and then they would cut pieces to make shoulder boards. And that's why you always see these seams in unorganized patterns. Sometimes you have three or four seams on one shoulder board. Sometimes you don't have any, but that is just the reason why um, why you have you see this here because it's all leftover material stitched back together to make shoulder boards and then then this was the last thing i found just an honest worn y strap um, you can always look in the on the reverse to find maker marks i believe but we have to look really closely with the camera here uh, it has an rbn manufacturing mark and a date probably 1944 uh, but it's very hard to read but you can see zero slash zero two and then it gets a little bit uh, faded. So, so I, I, I got this at the show the last day for 90 euros. So that's a real steal, I think, uh, if you see the prices today of these, uh, these Y straps. So this was uh, the last uh, bit of pieces I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and we'll be back for more later. Please don't forget to subscribe um, so more people in the world can see our videos. Thank you very much.